and the chief honours shared by Sterling Moss and Tony Brooks. It all began in these famous waters off Cowes a hundred years ago. Fifteen yachts contested an international race round the Isle of Wight. The event was won by a yacht from the United States, the schooner America. The trophy, ever since known as the America's Cup, was put up for perpetual international competition. But no country has yet succeeded in taking it from the Americans. The period between the two world wars saw the great J-class yachts reach their peak of perfection. And what a picture they made, these huge and very costly vessels. King George V and the Duke of Windsor, then Prince of Wales, enjoyed this sport on Britannia, one of the most famous of all time. No vessel in the world ever sailed so many races or won so many prizes, though she had never raced for the America's Cup. Just look at the size of her. Those were the days. For over 30 years, Sir Thomas Lipton went after that trophy. I've made several efforts to get that blooming old mug. He raced for the blooming old mug with shamrock after shamrock, five of them altogether. Sir Thomas Sopwith took over the role of British challenger with his endeavours one and two, but had no luck either. And now it's the smaller 12-metre scepter, backed by a Royal Yacht Squadron syndicate that aims to win for Britain that cup which America has held since 1851. She'll be racing against the 12-metre Columbia, chosen as defender after a series of trials with Vim and other yachts. Under the amended rules of the contest, Scepter has not had to sail across the Atlantic as other challengers had to do. She's been over there for some time, tuning up, and has a fine crew. Good luck to her in Newport Bay in her quest for the old mug. <laughs> 